If you're a Portland Trailblazers fan like I am, the first quarter of this season so far has been pretty annoying. Not only has Damian Lillard been in and out of the lineup, uh, CJ McCollum just went down with a collapsed lung. It seems like none of our young guys are developing into anything like we would have wanted them to be. We see a team right now that is pretty much in shambles compared to what they were a couple of years ago when they were making a Western Conference Finals run, when they were making runs in the playoffs, or when they just were a competitive team in general. Sitting at 11-14, I'm not necessarily off the bandwagon, but I am considering this team that they should be going into a rebuild, and they should be going into this season or into the rest of this season looking at their options in terms of offloading guys like CJ McCollum and possibly even Damian Lillard. Now, obviously, I don't want either of these guys gone. Both of these guys are solely the reason that they are competitive, as competitive as they have been over the past few seasons. Both Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum come from Weber State and Lehigh, respectively. And the work that those two guys have put in, not only to become lottery picks, but also to become all-star candidates in Damian Lillard's case. And, you know, CJ McCollum should have probably been an all-star by now. Uh, and that's more of a fan vote issue than it is a actual him issue. But with that being said, it is time to start looking for a rebuild, and it is time to start looking to offload at least one of those guys in terms of trying to get more competitive and have a brighter future. Today, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to you know throw out some trade possibilities. And again, I am, am a 22-year-old dude who thinks he knows a lot about basketball who thinks he knows a lot about the nba but i understand that a lot of people watching this are going to take a dump on all of these trade possibilities that i'm going to throw out here and you have to understand that some of this is me thinking that the players that i would trade for would be perfect for this team some of it is i know other teams around the nba have certain disgruntled players who they want to offload or get rid of and I just wish that my team will do the same, and hopefully we get one of those good players back in return. That's all I'm really saying. So if you hate my trade ideas, go ahead and let me know. At the end of the day, you leave a comment. I appreciate that no matter what. So let's just get into it. Let's start this one off with a four-teamer, huh? And I will say that some of these, this is going to range from me thinking that these are actually possible of happening to me thinking that they probably have no chance of happening. This is one that, while I do want it to happen, I don't necessarily know if it will happen uh, because it is something, you know, and I'm also not going to involve trades or uh, I'm not going to involve draft picks in these trades because no one knows what draft picks are going to be in trades until it actually happens. So I'm just not going to involve those in these trade um, ideas. But this first one I'm going to talk about. Portland gets Ben Simmons and Chris Apps Porzingis. Sacramento gets Trey Burke and Matisse Thibel. Dallas gets CJ McCollum and Yusuf Nurkic. Philly gets De'Aaron Fox and Robert Covington. Now, if you're a Sacramento Kings fan, obviously you probably don't like that trade. Trading De'Aaron Fox for Trey Burke but for Matisse, uh, for Trey Burke and Matisse Seibel. But you have to think you're basically getting addition by subtraction because it's basically a foregone conclusion that this team wants to put the ball in Tyrese Halliburton's hands. They want Tyrese Halliburton to be the guy for Sacramento. And trading De'Aaron Fox away gets them that ability to do that. I believe he has more shot attempts than De'Aaron Fox. He has less turnovers. He has about the same amount of assists. He has more steals. Uh, he just is putting together a better season right now than De'Aaron Fox is at the moment. I think De'Aaron Fox is only shooting like 25% from three, while Halliburton's at about the 38, 39 range. Um, so that fixes that issue. Philly gets the point guard that they need with De'Aaron Fox, as well as a solid 4-5 uh, small ball five and Robert Covington, who probably is more going to fill that role of, you know, the backup to like Tobias Harris or possibly playing with Tobias Harris at that four spot. Uh, Dallas with CJ McCollum and, and uh, Yusuf Nurkic. They get the guy that needs to have the ball in their hands outside of Luka Doncic. Um, and as well as Yusuf Nurkic, uh, I think that's just a better fit than Chris Epps Porzingis is because Chris Epps just wants to shoot the ball a lot and you can't really do that with Luka Doncic on your team. And he's a better fit as a just pure center who's going to be down low and fix a little bit of the spacing issues that Dallas probably has. Now for Portland, getting Ben Simmons and Chris Epps for Zingas. I have hated watching Yusuf Nurkic play basketball since he came back from his injury. Now, that's not me saying that he's a bad player. That's not me saying that I wish he wasn't on my team. I'm just saying that I don't like watching him play with Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. There's something wrong with his mindset or there's something wrong with his just, 
there's just something wrong there. And I think a change from Yusuf Nurkic, who's going to be down low and is going to be a guy getting shots around the rim a majority of the time, to a guy in Chris Porzingis who can stretch the floor, who can play with Damian Lillard a little bit better, that two-man game between Damian Lillard and Chris Porzingis will be lethal. Um, and as well as getting Ben Simmons, uh, I would probably <laughs> look at trading Ben um, instead if we're getting Chris Stapps because Ben is not going to be someone who could probably play with Chris Stapps, Porzingis, and Damian Lillard at the same time. But who knows? Maybe if he's the four with Chris Stapps, Porzingis at the five, that could be a deadly duo in the front court for the defense. And in transition, that would be an elite team as well. So either way, I would love what would happen if that trade were to go down. Next up, just a little two-teamer. Uh, I would have Portland trading CJ McCollum and Nasir Little to Boston for Jalen Brown and Grant Williams. Now, this is one of those ones where I was talking about earlier where, you know, it's obviously not working out in Boston with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And if I'm Boston, I hold Jason Tatum to a little bit higher of a value than I do Jalen Brown, mostly because I've seen Jason Tatum be the guy for a playoff team that has been considered a championship contender. And he's proved that he can be that. So, uh, and I think if you put CJ McCollum there, he's kind of the better fit because even though he doesn't need the ball in his hands, when he does get the ball in his hands, he's an effective player. So I think that's a better fit alongside Jason Tatum than Jalen Brown is. Obviously, it's a defensive uh, downgrade for Boston because they're not only losing Jalen Brown, who's an excellent defender, but Grant Williams is a good defender as well. Um, but offensively, I think they would get better. Next up, we got another little three-teamer involving, involving the Dallas Mavericks. I would have Portland getting Chris Epps, Porzingis, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, and Jalen Brunson. Dallas would get Brandon Ingram, Jackson Hayes, and Nasir Little, while New Orleans would get CJ McCollum, Josh Green, and Dennis Smith Jr. Now for New Orleans, again, another team where it's not working out. It hasn't worked out for about three years now since you got Brandon Ingram. Zion Williamson is... Who knows what's happening with Zion? You just let Lonzo Ball walk in free agency. You don't have a good team at the moment, and none of your players who have you who you have expected to take a increased role have done it efficiently. And what's weird about the New Orleans Pelicans is this not this guy Nikhil Alexander Walker is your leading shot taker on a team that involves Brandon Ingram. Um, that that can't be what is really wanted for someone like Brandon Ingram. I would assume he's pretty pissed off playing in New Orleans for a losing team watching a guy who's in his second or third season in Nikhil Alexander-Walker being the leading shot taker for the team. Um, so getting him out of that situation, getting him to Dallas where he could play alongside Luka Doncic, who not only is an actually efficient playmaker with the ball in his hands, but he could make plays for Brandon Ingram as well. Um, they also get someone in Jackson Hayes who I think fits alongside Luka better than... Chris Stapps does. Again, Portland gets Chris Stapps, Porzingis, and Jalen Brunson. Um, Jalen Brunson, the guy who's a good backup point guard. Um, and I th honestly, that's one of the better trades I think I could I could think of. Now, this is one that I actually love. And this is the one that I'm probably going to leave the video on and drop the mic with. Um, so here's a little three-tamer I thought of that I love. Indiana gets Ben Simmons. Philly gets CJ McCollum and Karis LeVert. Portland gets Damanis Sabonis and Seth Curry. Now, the only guy in this trade who I think the team would hate to lose is I think Philly would really hate to lose Seth Curry, obviously. Seth Curry has meant a lot to that team over this season. I think he's averaging like 18 points a game this season, or at least over the past few uh, couple of weeks, he's been averaging 18 points a game. But if you're on Philly's side of the ball, you have to think you're trading basically only Seth Curry because, as everyone knows, Ben Simmons has not touched the floor this year for the Philadelphia 76ers. He obviously wants out. You're basically only trading the floor services of Seth Curry for CJ McCollum and Karis LeVert. I think that's a win-win for the Philadelphia 76ers because they're offloading that Ben Simmons contract. They're getting someone in CJ McCollum who in general, is just a better player to, like, this has been the running theme with the, with this video, is CJ McCollum is a better player playing alongside some of these guys than the guys he's being traded for. Um, and as a Blazers fan, I love this trade because not only not only do I think Tabana, Demonis Sabonis would be a perfect fit with Damian Lillard, 
I think if you if you get Demonis Sabonis and you haven't even traded Yusuf Nurkic yet, then this just opens up the capabilities of trading Yusuf Nurkic for maybe a younger center or maybe just someone better than Nurkic in general or you know, maybe just benching Nurkic and waving him in the offseason or something like that because uh, I think Sabonis could play the five with Damian Lillard. Um, yeah, I just love this trade in general, and I think it's perfect for all three teams. Now, on Indiana's side of it, yes, they're getting someone who isn't trying to play basketball right now, but for the Indiana Pacers, I think that's a perfect situation for Ben because Indiana loves their basketball. They love their Indiana Pacers. Um and if you put him there, I think they are a better mindset of a fan base to let Ben Simmons get back to the court when he wants to get back and support him through everything he's going to do when he's back on the court. And that's really what Ben Simmons needs once he gets back is to have full support from the fan base, full support from his front office, and understand that he is going to take time to come back. And if he knows that going to Indiana, I think that would be a perfect, perfect move. Now, one that I, I know I just said that that last one was probably going to be one that I would walk off with, but one that I kind of just thought of and one that does intrigue me is this whole Brooklyn situation with Kyrie Irving. You know, what's going to happen with Kyrie? If I'm Brooklyn, if I'm the GM, if I'm Steve Nash, if I'm Kevin Durant, if I'm James Harden, I'm really interested in seeing if Portland would accept a Kyrie for CJ McCollum trade Basically straight up. Now, again, I'm not going to involve trade picks in this conversation or draft picks in this conversation because we don't know what those draft picks are going to be once until the trade actually happens. But I would think that if I'm Portland and I'm thinking about this, once Kyrie Irving comes back, he's a top five point guard in the NBA. He rightfully should have been on the NBA all-time 75 players list. Trading him... Or getting him in return for CJ McCollum is a win-win. The only issue is whether or not he comes back to the court in a timely fashion. Now, I don't mean a timely fashion in terms of what I would do. I don't mean a timely fashion in terms of what other people would do. How long is it going to come? How long is it going to take for him to come back to the court in general? If it's quicker than we think, then that's a win for the Blazers. If it's longer than we think, I think that's a win for them as well because. I don't know if Portland really, really wants to win right now, right away. If they bought him out and they get a player in the draft, this draft upcoming is very, very loaded with some guys that we know now of and we're probably going to know a lot more of by the time the tournament ends. We already know about guys like Paolo Bancaro and we know about guys like Chet Holmgren. Um, if the Blazers bought him out, they get Kyrie Irving now for CJ McCollum. They get someone like Holmgren or Bancaro in the draft that's an incredible overhaul if you keep Damian Lillard if you keep a lot of the guys on this team like Nasir Little and Anthony Simmons on and and bank on them improving over the next offseason you have a very very talented squad going into the next upcoming season and if they decide to go full rebuild and trade Damian Lillard uh, after they trade CJ then this team looks even better going into the future and that is what I'm going to leave this video on.